Okay, all right, here it is. Jutta Eckstein is my co-author on this book, and she wanted to be here to co-present today, but she's off doing another presentation. We um, decided to jointly write this book because we were trying to figure out the why, the, the structure, the underlying reasons why the things that Doug talked about Northern Tomato actually are working. And we combined four methodologies beyond budgeting, sociocracy, open space, and agile into a combined synthesized method that I won't go into. The last part of the book talks about if you want to implement this synthesis, then you need to use probing because probing is the method you use in uh, complexity. And the, I think everybody is fairly familiar with three of these. How many people would say that they were quite familiar with sociocracy or holacracy? More than I might have thought. The, okay, thanks. Um, more than I might have thought, there, there are two people here from the sociocratic center, das sociocratische Zentrum in Vienna, this Florian and Anne-Marie, if you would stand up. Um, they, there's actually quite an active sociocracy community here if you're interested in talking with them. Um, the, the term bossa nova is the monomic we're using for this combination. Um, beyond budgeting, open space, sociocracy, and agile, it's the name of a Brazilian dance. It's a synthesis itself of samba and jazz. And we um, encourage everybody to think about dancing with VUCA. Everybody's familiar with VUCA. The um, question about VUCA is, do you, are you afraid of it? Um, I like thunderstorms. This looks ominous here, but I like thunderstorms. Can you see opportunities in it? When you look at VUCA, can you think, hmm, um, I feel wonder about it. I feel um, curious. And how do you get that mindset is really a key question. If you're dealing with VUCA conditions in your company, the question is, where do you start to look for opportunities? Now, it happens that most companies talk about strategy. They talk about their objectives. And that's one place to start, except that's maybe not so. The original business theoretician, Chandler, in 18, 1962, said that, um, yeah, you need to start with strategy, your objectives, your purpose, your values, because structure follows that. And then Hall and Sias then said later, well, actually, the existing structure determines your strategic opportunities. So which is it? Which, which follows which? Where do you start in thinking about, well, where do we go with our company? It's actually more complicated than that. Um, you can say that your business um, is an organization, or maybe it has an organization, or maybe it's being organized. And you can find lots of people who say, well, process follows structure, but others who say structure follows process, and so on around. So there's really no easy place to start. A lot of people like to start with strategy, with your values, OK, but you can start any place there which doesn't exactly help you know what to do. Let's think about VUCA. VUCA means that there's, you can't determine cause and effect. How many people were trained in school to determine cause and effect? I recommend that you look at a, um, a, a TED talk called the Marshmallow Challenge, if you're not familiar with that. It, it, I saw a thumb go up over here. It's, it's a demonstration of rapid prototyping, and I love the results 
that kindergartners tend to do better than CEOs in this exercise of building a building with 20 sticks of spaghetti, a yard of tape, a yard of string, pardon the US measurement, and a marshmallow on top. And the, they, so the kindergartners build higher buildings unless the CEOs happen to have an executive admin on the team. And I've actually replicated that and told faculty of a school that the younger kids, the longer the kids are with them, the worse they do. Um, so in that kind of environment, understanding to do rapid prototyping is not something that we learn or we, we actually unlearn it as adults. I remember having three or four agile coaches in a session I was doing one time and they kind of walked in and said, well, we'll stay till noontime, but we probably got to go. And I had them do this marshmallow challenge exercise. If you haven't tried it, try it. And of course their building fell over and these were guys who were supposed to know about rapid prototyping and they said, okay, I guess we have something to learn and they stayed. Um, and so you can only see patterns in reverse. You can't see them going forward. So you can't approach the task of how do we deal with the VUCA world by saying, oh, here's the logical analysis that we do. That's waterfall. So what you do is you have to begin with reflection. So let's have a little bit of practice about beginning with reflections. I would like you to now to, and, and don't start yet, let me explain it, to spend 30 seconds, it's only a 20 minute talk, so we've got um, uh, not much time. Spend 30 seconds thinking about a complex situation you're dealing with. It could be, gee, what am I gonna do after this conference tonight? I don't have any plans. It could be, how come my kid made a poor score on her exam even though she studied for it or whatever it is, make it simple and think about, um, take 30 seconds now and think about a complex situation you're dealing with. Let's, we're practicing reflection here. Ready, set, go. Okay, now take about, uh, when I say go, about 20 seconds and ask yourself, what opportunities do I see in this situation? What's my wonder? What's my curiosity about this situation? What, how can I look at it? It's not confusing, but it's something that I can leverage. Okay, you got 20 seconds, ready, set, go. Okay, stop. You might have nothing, you might have an inkling, but now pair up and take about 30 seconds when I say go to tell your partner what you came up with and just talk about it briefly. And then I'll give you the end of 30 seconds and then your partner gets to do it. So 30 seconds, ready? Let's pair up. Triple up if you have to. Ready, set, go, 30 seconds. Okay, switch, that's 30 seconds, switch. Switch over.
Okay, stop. That process of thinking, taking time to think, and then talking about it with others yields lots of new ideas, yields a way of leveraging the complexity you're facing. So hold on that, because I'm now going to shift to the cycle of af what happens after reflection in a business context, and then we'll go back to whatever you came up with, and we'll finish, you finish the cycle. You have just done reflecting on your situation. It starts with nothing. Things arise out of nothing. It's a long topic to talk about there. Now, it says compare probes to the situation. What I'm going to do is give you examples from our book to give you an idea of what do you do. And another word to put in here is the word hypothesis. And part of the reason we wrote the book is because it helps to be able to generate useful hypotheses if you kind of know what is happening, what the theories are, what's possible to, to help you explore and test it. You know, can we check this out? So then you try an experiment. How many people remember from their eighth grade science class how to do an experiment? Yeah, we have, a lot of us don't do it after eighth grade. Um, and so we have to, to learn that again. Uh, and then when you're done with your experience, experiment, you do the, the scrum thing of having a retrospective. And what do you do next? And this is basically the process it sounds like that they used at Northern Tomato. They started out with a hypothesis. They experimented with it. It seemed to work, so they kept doing some more. Doug, get your book published, please. We want to see what you were doing. Publishing to your peers is something that doesn't happen much. We come up and we tell stories. They're good, case studies. I was asking a question yesterday about, does anybody know any academics that have actually you know, looked at this rigorously? And we heard, yeah, they're coming. But this is lagging behind in the movement toward business agility. This is lagging behind because we have to do what good scientists do, which is publish clear, detailed, results of our experiments for our peers to replicate and for people then to build on. That's how knowledge builds. OK, so let's just a quick note that this is, uh, when you go structure, strategy, process, this is a diagram from our book. There's lots and lots of suggestions in theories how you go forward. Like so with Doug, we heard about we can really use this kind of self-organizing stuff that kind of is related to maybe open space to do fantastic things. Great, we know that. And so you all can now look at Doug's book and say, gee, let's try that out. Does that really work in our situation? I'm going to now give some examples of some experiments uh, that people have tried. So this trust cheaper uh, might be something that you come up with in doing reflection. Gee, we're spending a lot of money because we don't trust people. Biarcha was talking about this yesterday and beyond budgeting. So you can be thinking about the fact that traditional travel expense procedures are burdensome and they say people can't be trusted. You still got to report what you did, what your expenses were, because the, you know, the, all the government people require that. But at least the companies I've worked for say, you can spend up to this much money per day. That's your per diem. You can spend this much in this kind of hotel. You've got to fly uh, economy class and so on. And so what if you just give the simple rules Doug was talking about and say, OK, make it economically sensible, make your trip economically sensible, be legal, and take care of yourself. That's your rules. Go off and, and do that. And you say, OK, maybe that's so that the procedures cost more than they save, and they're demoralizing. And so therefore, we want to try an experiment with those rules. So we do a pre-survey and an audit. How much is this unit actually spending? 
and you try it for three months in a few units with the other units being controls. If you remember from eighth grade, controls are really important so that you know what you got. And then you do a post survey. Was it cheaper? Uh, did we have anybody trying to cheat? How do, how do we control that? A lot of companies that try this just have everybody publish their, their results and that's the social pressure is all the, the control that they need. So then the question comes, where to publish this, ex this experiment? Do you publish it within your company? Is that good enough? Do you publish it you know, through the business agility group? Do, there's no good place to publish it. The academics hide all, all their stuff. You know, you have to pay money to be in there. Um, and so we are lacking the ability to really share that with each other so that, as a, so that we can cooperate across industries about what we're learning. This kind of conference is helpful. Here's another one. Our performance evaluations really reflecting customer focus. We've heard some talk about this. Uh, the background is, whoops, the background is that companies give uh, values are often given lip service. I saw an example of this uh, just last year at the headquarters of a big retail company where I was at a conference and I was speaking and we went to lunch and there on the cafeteria was the company's value statement, a very nice value statement. Then I presented later in the day and I said, okay, um, let's talk about values. What are the values of your company? And not one person could tell me, even though it was written on the wall of the cafeteria. So it was lip service. So um, how, do you, how do you actually get to the value, say, like of customer focus? How do you have the performance reviews actually reflect your, um, uh, your performance evaluation uh, and, and actually improve customer satisfaction? The key is to get an experimental unit to write their own performance evaluation criteria and then bring in your measure of customer satisfaction to see if you can distinguish a difference in customer satisfaction between the ones who just take the company performance evaluation criteria and the ones who write their own. I'm gonna just go on here. You can do the same thing about uh, checking whether um, you can separate bonus payments from performance evaluation. There's some nice examples, again, in beyond budgeting around that. And, um, the, uh, there, there's uh, some cases where companies have experimented with um, people uh, electing who in their peer group gets the performance uh, or gets the bonuses. They even elect, this, and this comes out of sociocracy, they even elect their bosses. They elect the people who get promotions. So there's all kinds of things that you can experiment with around that. So now design your own. This right here said, check with our book for suggestions, but you all ultimately want to get to the point where you design your own probes to see how do we go forward. So with the example, uh, what is your hypothesis? Think to yourself, what is my hypothesis about if I go out tonight? What if I go dancing like the Brazilians do? What will happen? My, my, uh, the, my experiment will be to do that, and my measure will be um, I feel more satisfied than if I had just sat in a bar drinking or gone home and read a book. That's your experiment. So take a moment to think about that. Okay, you have your probe. You have your experiment. The question is, who are you going to publish that to? We need to think about that. Who do you, who do you discuss it with? Maybe your friends. The, um, in summary, the um, a value center, I didn't give you a chance to talk because we're nearly out of time here, but the, the a value center is a cross-functional team and they seem to be the best at coming up with hypotheses and experiments because they go across uh, the company, and they have several bosses here. This is more stuff from the book, Inspiration, the customer, the support service team, and the board of directors, and they have to talk with them 
and interact with them. If you're operating um, sociocratically, there's ways of giving feedback to all of those that can't be ignored. And as you saw, should have seen the, uh, your experience with just talking with somebody made things clearer to you. So there are great uh, uh, forums for talking. And in the end, uh, never stop trying, learning, um, developing. The uh, only company that I know of, or one of the few companies that I know of, that consciously uses beyond budgeting, open space, sociocracy, and agile is Titansoft in Singapore and uh, Taiwan. And they are, uh, their slogan is, we never stop developing. Uh, they've also translated our book into Chinese. And so if you find yourself doing this and uh, saying, gee, I have to take courage in order to come up with these ideas, I, if, maybe I'll feel kind of weird, take, take uh, the, the, and say that you blame Bossa Nova for it, that you're dancing with Bossa Nova and you know, that makes you feel crazy. Um, and um, enjoy kissing the VUCA frog. It, it might be a great dance partner. Thank you. Thank you.